For social workers, we have like two different pathways to PR. What universities offer social work. These courses are the courses you find in almost every university because they are the core of social work. People always think you are kind of like limited to just be a social worker. They use points and you need PTE. Then social work opens up like endless opportunities. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Cheche Okoye and if you're a returning subscriber, hi, I am so happy that you're back. So today I'll be answering the most frequently asked questions, well the frequently asked questions about social work in my DMs, okay, in my DMs, Instagram, Facebook, comment sections, okay, and I just narrowed it down to some questions and I'm going to answer every single one of them. So, well, Keep watching. So for the record, I finished from ACAP, which is the Australian College of Applied Profession, and I did Master of Social Work, right? So I can know some answers to your questions, and I'm going to answer them, all right? So the first question that I always get is, what universities offer social work, right? I took my time to relieve you guys' the stress, and I did a research, well, I did a lot of research, and I found this link that has all the universities in Australia that offer social work and also like courses that are related to social work, right? I'm going to leave that link in the description box. It's a random link. It, it wasn't sponsored. I just found it because I wanted to do this video basically. But just so you know, different schools have different sort of like structure, right? So my school which is ACAP, we had trimester, which is three sessions in a year, and some schools offer it for two sessions, which is like semester, right? I chose trimester because I just felt like it was easier for me to sort of like break down my school fees in trimester, because if you don't know, in Australia, we pay school fees per semester. So let's assume your school fees is 30K in a year. Per semester, if you're doing semester, that means you pay 15,000 every semester. But I did trimester, so that 30K is divided into three. That's like, that's not the price, but that link, why I'm going to share that link is because it broke down every single question, right? So it has all the schools, courses related to social work, tuition fee for each course, um, course year, year of study, like how many years you have to study in that school for social work or whatever course it is that, that's related to social work. It has like everything, it even has like, it has like, cost structures, right? And even like the courses you have to do in social work, which is amazing. And it also has direct links to those schools' websites. And I think it's going to be so helpful to like better understand like different schools and you know, trying to find the tuition fee that kind of like matches your income basically, or whatever you can afford. Uh, yeah, technically. But for me, I chose trimester because again, it was easier, it's, it sounded easier to me. It was actually easier to break down my fees in trimester than in semester because then I get to do like two courses in a trimester, three courses in a trimester, supposed to like the four you do in a semester. So I'm just going to list out five just for the sake of listing out. They are not like the best schools though. They are not like the worst schools. It's just five that I know, the one I went to, the ones that my friends are in, basically so i'm going to list out the five the rest you can find them in that link so there's acaf <laughs> of course which is like my school that is the australian college of applied profession there is western sydney university there's the university of new england there's the university of southern queensland there's the university of sydney there's so many other universities another question i always get is the entry requirement if you want to study social work in australia depending on the level of your study bachelor's degree master's degree and even the school you choose the entry requirements are kind of like different but then they are the most common ones so for bachelors you have to just complete your secondary school right so secondary school we call it in nigeria in australia they call it like year 12 so you have to complete your year 12 and then you apply then if it comes to masters you have to do like a bachelor's degree in like so something that has to do like social science or even like social work for me i did bachelors of arts as my bachelor's degree, which is like mass communication. And I wanted a cap and um, they couldn't find any courses calls that sort of like related to social work. So what I did or what they offered is for me to do graduate certificate of human services, graduate certificate in human services. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. So I had to do six months of graduate certificate in human services before I was able to move into social work. Now there are schools that are a bit different, okay? I Before I went into ACAP, I actually researched University of New England 
and they were going to offer me direct direct entries to master of social work however it was far from me first of all second of all their school fees was no, I wasn't ready to pay that amount and they do semester. So I know what I was looking for. So I was like, okay, fine. I'm willing to sort of like, you know, do this. It's still in Sydney. My school is in Sydney. I don't want to go all the way to regional area to do that one. I just want to stay around here, right? So that's why I didn't do that. So it depends. The entry requirements are different. There are some schools you can just enter that way. There are some schools like ACAP, you have to do the graduate certificate first. And that's just like for six months and then you go straight into master's. Also, there's the English requirement, okay? There's ILTS, you have to get at least 6.0, which is what I use. And then there's PTE, I think I believe you have to get at least 50 or at least 60 to be able to get in. I also get questions about the subject or the courses that we do in social work. Again, different school, different structure, but I've narrowed it down to like the most important things, okay? These courses are the courses you find in almost every university because they are the core of social work and schools don't kind of like decide to take it out because what the hell is social work if you take out those courses, right? So the first one I'm 100% certain every university teaches is social work theories and practice. There is no school that doesn't teach social work theories and practice because that's literally what it is. So this is where we learn like the fundamental theories, like the practices, the methods. Then we learn about like system theory, cognitive based therapy, narrative therapy. You learn things like strength focused, strength based approach, solution focused approach. So this is just like the base. This is like the core of social work, right? These are the tools we actually get to use when we leave school so i believe every single school that offers social work teaches social work theory and practice another one that you can find in every university for sure is ethics and principles okay social work ethics and social work principles is like one of the core things that they teach us in social work so here you sort of like things like values and principles that kind of like guide social work practice you learn like um ethical decision making professional boundaries legal requirements because as amazing as social work is everything has to you have to be guided by principles you have to be guided like policies because because it's a very like um how do i explain this course it's an amazing course i love it right but uh, a mistake can be quite sad when you make a mistake in in like your practice it might not be taken as likely as any other place right because it gets to deal with like human beings so you have to always maintain professional boundaries you have to always be ethical right you have to always be responsible you have to always like adhere to the legal requirements so another core course is research methods and evaluation now this is like not my favorite course because it was a very stressful course to do and i'm so grateful i did it when i just did two courses it was stressful, but it's one of the core things you have to learn as a social worker, right? So here we learned how to do qualitative and quantitative research method, data collection and analysis. We did a lot of literature reviews. We actually even did an assessment that has to do with like organizing like an event and doing all the behind the scene things and the uh what you call this all these things you do they do like interviews do like focus groups you do all those stuff so that's what the research method is all about it's very nice now that i'm out of school i do appreciate it it was just one of those stressful courses that i now like i did not like them <laughs> So another important one is the course that has to do with like cultural competency now i think it's named different things in different school for us i think it was called indigenous australia and so basically it's like again one of the core things about social work understanding your values understanding your beliefs your understanding like how race religion like all those like identity cultural identity like understanding how things may affect somebody right so my lecturer will say it's not about what happened but why did it happen right so you get a client and this is what the client did you're not sort of you're not going to judge you're going to find out why did you do what you did right not what did you do basically if that makes sense so that's what like all those like cultural competencies sort of like teaches you and it also sort of like teaches you how to be able to understand your own biases so if i'm able to understand what my biases are okay these are my values these are my identity now i'm going to figure out how not to let my value affect the way i help people i'll affect the way i listen to people that's like literally just the base of cultural competency so you have to like work with people according to their own values right you have your professional knowledge but it still doesn't take away what the other person believes right it doesn't take away that so as much as you are the 
um the experts they also tell you in social work that the, your client is your is the expert okay they are the ones that are going to make the change you're just here to sort of like nudge them and guide them through but you can't just put your beliefs on them basically and then another one that i'm pretty sure every school does is field field work field education placement which is like you have to do 1000 hours of placement i, I hear that dude so like for me it was like one whole trimester for placement which was not so fun because it's nine to five so you have to work nine to five and if you are lucky you get a you get a like a company that lets you do hybrid work from home go to work oh you have to actually go to work face to face i think at least three times in a week and then if they're happy for you to do two times in a week that's for my school though and then there's some companies that will say you have to be there five days face to face so yeah these are the courses that are like core there are other core courses but this one i'm pretty sure every single school will teach you that okay well this is like one of the best questions i always get which is like what are the career prospects in social work after you complete your studies right people always think you're kind of like limited to just be a social worker but i'm here to tell you this is a very interesting course because it has like a wide range of things you can do that is not necessarily titled social work right so it's not you don't have to just be a social worker studying social work opens up like endless opportunities so i'm just going to list out the things you can do when you study or you can do after completing your course as a social worker i mean first of all you can be a social worker <laughs> which is like okay yeah a social worker you can work in hospital you can do the mental health social work which is like i'll say my field because that's sort of like what i gravitate towards and what i've been gravitating towards i've picked that for my placements i'm doing that now as a graduate and I'm trying to do better and progress and get accredited, accredited <laughs> as a mental health social worker, right? So like that's like the area I'm sort of like dive, like you know gravitating towards. So there's the mental health social worker, there's the normal social worker, there's the school social worker. You can work in schools, help kids, um, guide them basically. You can work in places like Department of Communities and Justice as a child protection caseworker. Or you can work as a caseworker in any other place. You can work as a behavior support practitioner under like the NDIS on the home care package. You can work as a support coordinator as well. Interesting. You can work as literally anything. Because of the research method that we did, all right, you can work as a policy analyst and a researcher. Working in that field helps you to sort of like develop social policies, implement them, evaluate which is basically what that research method and evaluation course is all about it's going to help you do data analysis okay period i'm telling you and then there is me working as a rehab consultant okay that's like my job title but that's what a social worker can do as well so like i said you don't necessarily have to work as a social worker as your title there are just different other aspects just think of anything that has to do with managing human beings case management you can work as a therapist you can work as a counselor you can it's literally endless so you can if you can imagine working as somebody that helps people okay yeah you social work will fit into that and there's a lot of like lot of job opportunities out there so just in case you're looking for a job as a social worker don't just like narrow it down to social work roles like the titles okay social worker there are endless things you can be like i said i've mentioned a few there's more you can find on the internet there's just so much you can do as a social worker you don't necessarily have to have titles i'm trying to say basically and then the last question i'm going to answer is the social work pr pathway okay i'm only going to answer this because it's something i'm going through or i've been through so it is i have like more like legit information to give you right so for social workers we have like two different pathways to pr in terms of like skill assessment we have the welfare skill assessment and then we have the social work skill, skill assessment so the welfare skill assessment the body that oversees that is the acwa so the acwa stands for australian community workers association so this is the body that oversees the welfare skill assessment and they use points and you need pte um you try to at least get 80 to get 20 points for pte if you get 70 you get 10 points for pte right so what they need is they need like your certificates all of your certificates so i have to which is the human services that i had to do for six months and the social work that i did right and then they need your transcript for both they need um they requested my birth certificates my passport 
um, they need your placement completion letter. Very important. You can get that from your school, just like call them or email them. They need your placement transcript as well. I didn't know what that is until I had to submit it. So I didn't even know it was a thing. So yeah, it goes with points. There are the point system. You can find a point system online, okay? I'm not going to dive into that. I'm talking about social work today, right? So there's a point system that almost like everybody uses for PR, right? So that's what they use as well. And then for if you're going through the social work skill assessment, the body that covers that is our body, which is the ASW. That is the Australian Association of Social Workers, period. <laughs> okay, so that one, you need ILTS. It's also points, right? But what you need is ILTS, right? And people don't usually go for that because they need you to get at least 70. Seven plus seven, seven on in each. So you have the writing, the listening, the speaking, the reading. You need to get at least seven, right? Now you are able to retake if you get like six in one. Let's say you get seven in three and you get like six point five in one, right? They give you the opportunity to retake, right? So if you retake, make sure <laughs> You, you don't others don't go below seven basically you can retake and make it up right but others will still have to be like on a high score at least 6.57 basically so these are like the most frequently asked questions that i get about social work there are a lot more if you want me to share more leave those questions in the comment section and i'll pile them up and i'll make another video and talk about them but these are the ones i've answered today and i hope it helps somebody out there and if it helped you let me know in the comment section like comment share and i'll see you guys next week mm -hmm.